So there's um there's a study that has come out uh, by this charity called Tier Fund, and Tier Fund did this. The study in collaboration with Fauna and Flora International, the Institute of Developing Study, uh, Development Studies and Waste Aid, and has actually revealed that one person dies every 30 seconds due to plastic pollution and uncollected rubbish wow. in the developing world. One person every 30 seconds. That means that in the space of my talk, this. Um, this morning, roughly 60 people would have died because of pollution, because of plastic pollution, because of uncollected rubbish in this developing world, in the developing world, which is, which is mad. Because of our actions, because of stuff that we decide to use and stuff that we decide to do, 60 people will die, at least. It's crazy. Today, we, um, we're going to be looking at uh, the series of the art of being human, like Ben was saying, and... Um, I'm going to look at part three of Sabbath, and Sabbath is this this sense of of, of rest. Becky, you know, Becky spoke about a little bit about it last week about work, 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 work. Uh, feel free um, to check it out on YouTube. And Ben spoke about as well the week before. And this is part three, and I kind of want to take us back to to the very beginning, and we want us to go to to Genesis, the the creation story, where you know, and we were just singing. Now, can we just give a round of applause actually for the band? They've been serving us so well this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. But um, they were singing about um, this. <laughs> All right, yes, we're singing. We still get a shout out from that little person at the back. Um, we were talking and we were singing about this amazing God that created the world that we live in. And um, I love it. I love this story. I think it's, it's quite poetic. Um, I, I think it's, it's quite beautiful as well. And, and for those who do not know how the story goes, the story goes a little bit like this. And this is kind of like the Daniel version of the story. And you, you'll be able to kind of follow this up in, uh, in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. You'll be able to check this out. But the story goes a little bit like this. There was nothing. And God was chilling and he was looking around. And he says, let, let, let there be light. He spoke and boom, light came into existence. There was, a, there was a thing that was light, which was day, and he called the darkness night. That was the day one. And then the second day, what happens, he, he separates the sky from, from the oceans, and there's a separation that happens. That's day two. And then he separates the oceans and land. He creates land. That's day three. And then on day four, God says, you know what, let's put some lights up. He creates the sun, and he creates the moon. That's day four. And then he creates vegetation on the land. Plants start to grow. It's day five. And then day six, he creates, creates animals, the beasts, to walk the land. Before I forget, on day five, he creates as well the birds and the fish to swim in the sea as well. And on day six, he creates, um, he creates the animals. And then he creates humanity, creates us, humankind. He creates us in his image. And he says, it's very good. Creation has kind of come to a completion. And then on day seven, it says that he rests. And for, for that day of rest, we, we're calling it Sabbath. Everybody say Sabbath. Sabbath. Okay. So six days of creating, six days of doing stuff, of working, and then comes to the final day, and he rests. It's, it's the Sabbath day. And what I want to tell you this morning is that day, that seventh day, is so fundamental as part of the creation story. We cannot have the creation story without having that day of rest. Mm. That is essential for God's plan for the story of how the world came into existence, how creation came to exist. Because we wouldn't, you know, if, if crea creation wouldn't be a suitable place if there was no light. Creation wouldn't be a suitable place if there was no air. Creation wouldn't be a suitable place if there was no water. Mm. So how can we remove the Sabbath? How can we remove the day of rest? Creation will not be a sustainable place wow. without rest. Rest is something that's so fundamental for the story that we read in the, in the first pages of the Bible, the story of how God created the world. Rest is so important for the land that we live in. I mean, last year, for those people that love festivals, last year, Glastonbury took, um, took, a t took some time off, didn't they? Because they wanted the land to rest. The land is so, is so important that the land takes a bit of rest. The Sabbath reminds us of our humanity. Mm. 
and it actually dethrones us from a place of lordship of creation and allows God to do his thing. You know, King David, who was a, a poet and a, and a singer, he says this in, in Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all of his people belong to him. Everything that we see around us actually belongs to God. Mm. He owns it, everything. If we remove this period of rest, if we remove the Sabbath, basically what we're saying is, God, we don't know, we don't want to do what you're telling us to do. We know what is better. And actually, that is a form of idolatry because we're going against God's perfect plan for the world that we live in. Sabbath is fundamental. It doesn't belong to us, this world that we live in. Every part of the world belongs to God. And throughout the Bible, we see his love and his affection to this world that he's created. Sabbath keeping is earth keeping. Mm. Turn to the person next to you and say, Sabbath keeping is earth keeping. I'm going to try with the other person next to you. Sabbath keeping is earth keeping. You see, now our rationale, our way of thinking for this world that we live in is very different to how everyone else perceives it. The reason why we should care about the earth that we live in, the reason why we should care about the creation that we're part of is because God cares about his creation. That's the only reason we do it. We do it because we want to capture the very essence of who God is. We want to capture the heart of who God is. God cares for this creation. God cares for this earth. So we should do the same. But see, everything is perfect. There's a beautiful harmony between humanity and God and creation and the earth. There's a beautiful harmony. It's a beautiful relationship. But then we move on. And we go on to, to chapter 3 in the book of Genesis. And chapter 3, verse 17 says this. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruits I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All of your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Now, there's this moment in this history of creation where everything is perfect. There's a perfect harmony between humanity, God, and the rest of creation. And then it comes to this point where Adam and Eve, humanity, decide, you know what? God, we know what is better. Put the two fingers up for God and rebel against God. And because of that, what is perfect and Harmonious becomes imperfect. The harmony all of a sudden disappears. There's the disruption. And that is, you know, the Bible calls that sin. There's where we're meant to be going one direction, and then we decide to rebel against God and go and go somewhere else. There's a, there's a sin, and that brought a disruption between all this. What was in harmony becomes disharmonious. And when and then the ground, because of that, becomes cursed. Now, when, when I'm talking about curse, I'm not talking about, I don't know, witches' spells or Leviosa from Harry Potter or anything like that. That's not, that's not the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. But I'm talking about when, when we look at the words curse, um, and I was checking out, but now I thought, you know what, let me check it out in actual, the original language it was written. And, and the word curse is the same as, as to condemn. See, as humanity sinned against God, as humanity rebelled against God, what happens, there's, there's repercussions for that action. And what happens is the ground, the earth, creation becomes condemned. We fast forward a few years and there's this guy called, um, called Moses. And, and some of you guys you know, will know who Moses is. Some of you guys have no idea. Moses the Prince of Egypt guy from the movie. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the Moses that I'm talking about. So Moses <laughs> is taking the people out of, um, out of Egypt, out of slavery, into freedom. And then he's chatting with gods, and then he gets a whole bunch of rules. And then we, we, we jump into, into Leviticus 25, 1 to 7. And it says this. While Moses was on Mount Sinai, the Lord said to him, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you have entered the land I'm giving you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath rest before the Lord every seventh year. For six years you may plant your fields and prune your vineyards and harvest your crops. 
that during the seventh year, the land must have a Sabbath year of complete rest. It is the Lord's Sabbath. Do not plant your fields or prune your vineyards during the year. And don't store away the crops that grow on their own or gather the grapes from your unpruned vines. The land must have a year of complete rest, that you may eat whatever the land produces on its own during its Sabbath. This applies to you, your male, female servants, your hired workers, and the temporary residents who live with you. Your livestock and wild animals in your land will also be allowed to eat what the land produces. So as God is giving these instructions to Moses, who is hundreds and hundreds of years after that story that we read in Genesis about how God created the world, there is this mirror, again, of how creation happened, where God says, you are allowed to work for six years. Work the land for six years. But then on the seventh year, let it rest. Let the land chill. Let it kind of get that Sabbath, that rest that it deserves. Again, it's the very heartbeat of who God is. It's the very nature of God. Work and rest. It's not, it's not even a balanced thing. It's not something that we have to try and keep in balance because you're always on the edge when you're trying to keep things in balance. Mm -hmm. But it's something that's harmonious. It's something that has to be in harmony. That has to be married to one another. So God is instructing the people of Israel. Work for six years, work the land for six years, on the seventh, you need to rest. We later go on to the final, to the, to the next chapter, and this is in Leviticus 26. And there's the sense of how, which is the following chapter, and there's the sense of how, if you are obedient to God, there's a blessing that kind of comes upon you. Who here would like to be blessed? Three people. Let's try that one more time. Who would like to be blessed here? And I think there's something here that comes with, if you are obedient to God, it just naturally opens a blessing Amen. from God. Thank you. If you are obedient to God, there's a blessing that comes. And then it, it talks about here in Leviticus 26. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will then yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest and your harvest and the grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. You will eat and you will feel and live securely in your own land. And there's this beautiful thing. If you are obedient to what God is saying, your land will produce so much stuff, so much goodness. Only thing you need to do is just to be obedient to what he says. Take a year out. Have a year of rest. Let the land rest. And then later on in the chapter it says though, but there will be repercussions if you do not do that. Wow. What will happen is, the people will be scattered and the ground, the land will be sterile, won't be able to produce anything. And we fast forward a few years later on and uh, now we, we, we jumped in, into a time where the people of Israel, so Moses is long dead and we come to a point where the people of Israel are now being exiled into, into, another, into another nation. The enemies have come and then stolen them and taken them back, taken them to another nation. And then this is what it says, which is actually mad. This is Second Chronicles 36, 22. It says this. The land finally enjoyed its Sabbath rest, lying desolate until 70 years were fulfilled. It's mad to think that after hundreds of years, that was the point where the land, the land that God had given to the Israelites, the land that God created, had finally found rest simply because the people were not there to work on the ground because they were not there the land was able to rest and it's crazy to think that they had to be exiled in order for them for that to happen because we go back again to what god has said to moses if you're not obedient to this then your people will be scattered mm -hmm. and as we as we see it people were scattered people had to be taken away in order for the land to be able to 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 be rested you see god loves creation mm -hmm. god loves you has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of you. But God as well created the land that we live in and has a heart for the land that we live in because that is just a, that is just a representation of God's love towards us. Mm. Have a Sabbath. Let the land take a Sabbath. I found something really interesting this, um, this week which, which blew my mind. There's this, um, there's this section in the world called the DMZ or the DMZ. Has anyone ever heard of that before? It's this section between North Korea and South Korea. Has anyone ever heard of those two countries before now north korea okay so north korea and south korea have been been in conflict for, for a long time it's kind of been a bit of a peace thing
thing going on between them, but they've been in conflict for a long time. And there's this, there's this piece of land in between North Korea and South Korea. And I, I found out this um, is the demilitary zone, the DMZ zone. And um, I found out that actually in that zone, in the DMZ zone, there is over 9,000 different types of wildlife that exist there, which is crazy to think that this small piece of land in between two hostile nations has over 9,000 types of wildlife. And it's interesting to see that because it's untouched, because people are not to, allowed to go to that place, because it's untouched, because humans are not gone and, and try and spoil it, wildlife and new life has come forth. It's the heartbeat of God. Work, 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 rest. It's a beautiful harmony. We need to do it. We cannot remove the Sabbath. We cannot remove rest. Because yes, I guess it's part of our thinking that we need to do that. But then, I mean, even what Becky was saying last week, and we start to feel it in our own bodies. You know, if we work way too hard, we start feeling the repercussions in our bodies where we start yeah. to get ill, our hair starts to fall out, we start to get stressed. It's a whole bunch of problems that happen with it, right? Yeah. Matt, it's the same thing with the land. It's important that we implement Sabbath. It's important that we implement rest wow. within our lives in how we conduct ourselves and how we treat the land that we live in. That's good. Sabbath is so important. It is part of God's perfect plan. You see, governments are clearly passing laws, and, and it's the beautiful thing. And I know Ben is going to chat later on about this new challenge that we're going to have I mean, I went to McDonald's the other day, and I was actually pretty happy to say hello. I was pretty happy to see that um, they got rid of the plastic straws, right? And that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. It's a good, good shout out, um, McDonald's. Um, and we can see there's certain things that are kind of happening that are kind of changing, which is, which is a beautiful thing. I mean, Greta was chatting, that this Norwegian girl was talking um, a, a few months ago about how the, the planet is kind of dying and all that kind of stuff. And we can see that the governments are starting to put in place certain things to change the world that we live in, but I would even say that that would take us on to a certain point. I mean, governmental laws are great and they're helpful, but the reality of what needs to happen is that this. Yeah. It's a change of heart, actually. It's a change of heart. It's us actually capturing God's heart for the land that we live in, for the mm. planet that we live in. If we capture it, things change. And you see, the only way that a change of heart can happen, the only way that surgery can happen in our hearts is through Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can change people's hearts. It says this in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. See, we believe that Jesus, Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection brings new life new creation when we put our faith and our trust in jesus and when we say you know what I'm, I'm i want this i want this in my life we become new creation we usher in new creation and then what happens is we become this agents of new creation in the world it is important that we capture the heart of god the very essence of god to take care of the land that God has given us because mm. it's, it's easy to kind of just kind of go through life and just do our own thing and not even think about it because we think oh, one day everything will die anyway and I'll be dead so it's all good but I think that is just a poor <laughs> attitude to have yeah failing to like I said earlier failing to do that failing to be obedient to what God says is idolatry saying God I don't need you my plan, the plan that I have for my life, the way that I want to conduct myself is way more important than the plan that you, the creative of the universe, have for me. Laws are great and governmental laws are great, but it has to be a change, a change of heart. It has to be a change of heart in each and every one of us. And there's loads of practical stuff that we can do, isn't there? There's loads of practical stuff. And I mean, how do we help the earth? And, and there's different, different ways that we can do it. We can... Um, be very practical, we can reduce our, I guess, our consumption of beef. And I'm not saying that everybody has to be vegan. That's not all vegetarian, that's not what I'm saying. But the, the, the stuff that we eat, we can change that because of the kind of the pressure that, that puts it in water and the usage of fossil fuels and all that kind of stuff. 
we can, we can change that, but we can recycle as well. We can pre-cycle, you know, buying things that have little packaging. Uh, we can use renewable energy suppliers. We can walk instead of, of driving a car. We can, you know, get a bike. We can use public transportation. Uh, we can use the, we can reduce the single usage of plastic. There's a whole bunch of things that we can actually do in a very practical way to change and, and, to, and to make sure that we are taking care of, of the planet that we live in. But all those things would take us so far. It's a change of heart that needs to happen. And that is only possible through Jesus. Jesus is the only one that has the ability to do surgery in our hearts. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and everything is new. We need to change our attitude towards Sabbath. We need to change our attitude towards rest. Paul says this, and I'm going to, I'm going to call the band to come up, but Paul says this in Romans 8.21, that creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. Creation is looking forward to when everything is right, when everything is put right. Let's not be like the Israelites, when they, had, when they went into exile, that's when the earth had time to rest. Let's make sure that we keep that Sabbath in our lives, that we keep that day of rest for the world that we live in, to take care of it, because it's part of God's creation. It's part of what he intended it to be. I'm going to read that quote one more time that I read from the beginning. Every 30 seconds, every 30 seconds, a person dies due to plastic usage and due to uncollected rubbish. We might not see the effects of it right now, but the people in other countries, in developing countries, see the effects of it. And it breaks, I mean, it breaks my heart because I know I'm part of the problem. But if it breaks my heart, imagine how God feels about it. Yeah. To see that the creation, the thing that he loves, is dying and being destroyed because we are rejecting. We are rejecting God. We are rejecting his perfect plan. Even on a more personal level, there's a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us in this room. Yeah. You're not here by accident. You're here for a reason. And many times in life, we have gone our own way and done our own thing and rejected the perfect plan that God had. I mean, forget about the Sabbath, even conversation. The perfect plan that God has for our lives is for us to be in relationship with Him, to live life to the full, life with purpose and with true meaning. That's the perfect plan that God has for our lives. But we have rejected it, just like Adam and Eve did at the beginning of the story and have decided to go our own way do our own thing thinking like if I do these things then those things will give me pleasure that's a problem there's a guy called um, Augustine from back in the day like ages 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 yeah like centuries ago <laughs> right and he used this term when he's describing sin when he's describing this rebellion against God he uses this Latin term called incurvatus in si which is Latin for inward looking is when you kind of just inward looking and he says that that is actual sin because you're not outward looking, you're not looking at God, you're not looking at other people. Your focus is in yourself. And I think that's the problem. That's the problem with humanity. Yeah. Become selfish, self seeking. And I get the real privilege of um, going into a whole bunch of schools and telling people about Jesus. I mean, just this week, uh, I was in uh, Brightline, the band that I'm part of, and, and another band, Soulbox, uh, that Sammy and, and John are part of as well. Uh, we, we had the privilege of, uh, of going into schools and, and doing gigs, and, and 164 young people made the decision to follow Jesus, which is amazing, right? That's, that's awesome, right? That's sick, right? In this day and age, people say, no, I want hope, and they say, no, I want to check this out, I want this. That's amazing. But one of the biggest questions that we get constantly is this, okay, so if God is so good, why is there so much problem? Why so much evil in the world? And I'm, I'm pretty sure you've probably had that conversation. Maybe you yourself have asked that question, right? Yeah. I know I've asked that question. We hear that question constantly. And, and, the, and the reality is, the, the, the reason why, uh, I believe that the reason why there's so much issues, so much problem, 
It's because of this thing called sin. It's because of humanity rebelling against God. It's because of humanity becoming inward looking and rejecting God's perfect plan. And because of that, that has repercussions in the world that we live in. Yeah. And that's why we see death and decay and problems. Because of that rebellion against God. Mm. We see, like I read again, and Jesus says this, whoever is in Christ becomes a new creation. The old is gone, everything is new. Jesus is the only one that can change hearts. Jesus is the only one that can bring peace. Jesus is the only one that can bring life. We can try and do a whole bunch of things and think like, if I do all this kind of stuff, then I'll be truly fulfilled and satisfied. But the reality is that is not true. Yeah. True satisfaction, true life only comes when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. When we tap into the perfect plan that he has for your life, my life, then we are truly living. Mm. It's like a lot of us would have been just simply existing, right? Just kind of breathing, kind of going for their day, ticking boxes. Oh yeah, this is fun, but I kind of do my own thing. But we're not made to simply exist. And I know I've said this before. And I'll say again, we're not made to simply exist. But actually, we're made to live life to the full. Life with purpose, with true meaning. And actually, that is only possible when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. Tap into the perfect plan that God has for us. And then real simply, and before I even give an opportunity for people to, to make some sort of a response this morning, the way that God made it possible for us to have life is through Jesus. The Bible says this in John 3.16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not die but live forever. True life is only possible through Jesus. And the way that he made that possible is through his death and resurrection on the cross. Through his death on the cross and then it his resurrection after that. Jesus dies on the cross in order for us to have life. There's a beautiful exchange that happens there. He takes our sin, our mess ups, and puts it on him. He takes that punishment that we deserved. But three days later, Jesus comes back to life, defeating sin and death, showing us that in the midst of the storms of life, there is hope. Hope only comes with Jesus. It's not wishful thinking. It's not human optimism. All that kind of stuff is good. But this hope has a name. His name is Jesus. Yeah. This hope is based on an event. And that's the resurrection. The fact that Jesus came back to life. And ushers in the new creation. And allows us to be part of this new creation. And there's an opportunity for all of us in this room. To have new life. All we need to do is, the Bible uses this word called repent, which literally means you, you go in one direction and then you kind of switch it up and you go in another direction. You go to where God is going. You see, contrary to what Adam and Eve did, where they were going the direction of God and then switch it up and went somewhere else, we're doing the opposite. We're going somewhere else, we switch it up and then we go to where God is going. And there's an opportunity for each and every one of us in this room to have true life life to the full life with purpose with true meaning and that's possible because of what Jesus did so what I'm going to ask you us to do I'm going to ask you guys all to close our eyes can we just do that close our eyes and maybe maybe you know today even just hearing that Jesus story you're like oh okay I, I hear you bro I hear what you're saying I want that. I want Jesus to take the driver's seat of my heart. Or maybe you've, you've made some sort of decision in the past and you've kind of been coming to church or every now and then go to church but it's become more of a cultural thing than the reality for you. This adventure with Jesus. Because life with Jesus is a life of adventure. And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to count to three. And if that is you, you're saying, I want this, I want this in my life. I need this. I need to... I want to, God's perfect plan for my life. I want Jesus to take the driver's seat of my heart. I'm going to ask you to do something brave. I'm going to count until three. And if that is you, I'm just going to ask you to just pop your hand up. 
And there's nothing magical about you popping your hand up. That hand going up is just a symbolic act of saying, God, I need you. I want you. Show me. One, God loves you. Two, we sinned as humanity. We rebelled against God, went against God's perfect plan. And because of that, we deserved actually death. But God, in His amazing love, provides a solution. That is Jesus. Jesus comes to earth, lives a perfect life, a life that we couldn't live. At the end of His life, He dies on the cross. But the story doesn't end there because three days later, Jesus comes back to life and gives us all an opportunity to have true life. And three, if that is what you want to do, I'm just going to encourage you to put your hand up. Thank you. Thank you. Is it okay if you just keep your hand up? Is that okay? Can, yeah, is that okay? Because we want to give you something as well. This is true life. Life to the full. Life with purpose. So what we're going to do, church, we're just going to pray, and it will be great for us all to pray together. Is that okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Can we say, dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. Now we can do louder than that. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've messed it up. I've messed it up. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against you. But thank you that you love me. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you died for me. And thank you that you came back to life for me. Thank you that you came back to life for me. And today I choose to live for you. And today I choose to live for you. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you love me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for those people that, that put their hands up? That's amazing. So good. That's exciting, man. That's amazing. Going back to the, to the whole idea of rest and the idea of Sabbath. Maybe some practical things that we can do. And I don't want this just to be rhetoric. I don't want this to be a, a tree-hugging sermon. Because that's, that's not what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, recycle, do all that kind of stuff because that's like the buzzword no 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 this is this is actually I, reading it this week and kind of thinking about it is challenging me quite a bit in kind of what i got at home and what i'm actually doing because i want to tap in i want to tap into god's perfect plan yeah sabbath is part of god's plan sabbath is part of the creation story creation without sun wouldn't work creation without air wouldn't work creation without sabbath doesn't work yeah. Sabbath is essential in our own lives in how we rest but as well in how we we take care of the world that we live in so this is a challenge for you guys maybe you know if you're a couple or if you're living by yourself what is it that you can do what changes can you do in your household at home we do that because we love God yeah and God loves his creation God loves the world that we live in. Let it not just be going over your head and just rhetoric. Let it be a heart transforming thing which only comes from Jesus.